Hey, what's up? This is Keith from Every Time I Die. You're watching Wheeler's Weekend Jams live and direct. Wheeler's Weekend Jams live and direct. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to Wheeler's Weekend Jams live and direct backstage at Warp Tour in Chicago. And next to me is Mr. Keith Buckley Hi. from Every Time I Die. How you doing, sir? I'm great. How you doing? Fantastic. Really hot. Really friggin' hot. Really hot. Um, how is uh, how's this Warp Tour experience uh, been going for you guys since you guys have been doing this for a long time with yeah. Warp Tour? This is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the best one. To be honest, I. Uh, it's a very different experience. It's a lot smaller. Uh, everything is a little tighter. It's a little more streamlined. It's not as, you'll notice like if, when you go out there, the area isn't as big. Mm -hmm. There's not as many stages. There's not as much, I don't know, noise. It seems like it's very efficient and uh, you know just kind of limited to things that the kids can focus on and not constantly be distracted by. Exactly. Yeah, Warp Tour is a pretty smooth running process, and uh, I'm just going to get right into it. You guys are coming out with a brand new album, yeah. Low, uh, Low Teens, coming out September 23rd. Yes. Um, tell us uh, how this uh, recording process was on this album. Um, well, it was quite different from usual. Typically, I just kind of write um, lyrics before we hit the studio, and then when we're in the studio, I brush up on them. And then the day comes that I have to record the lyrics, and that'll be the first time I've ever done them out loud. Um, so uh, t I'm not usually very confident. I'm trying a lot of things out, and it takes a lot of time for me normally. But this time, uh, because we were in Buffalo at our friend's studio, uh, Will Putney flew in, and the guys were recording in the room upstairs, and I had the downstairs room to myself to like record uh, to their demo tracks that they were doing. and. I was able to experiment on my own time without really, uh, you know, taking up anybody else's, and I got to just do a lot of stuff that I needed to to do in order to feel confident once I got in the booth, and I think that confidence comes through. You have the confidence level. Uh, actually, two years ago, you came on stage with Kay Flay, yeah. and uh, actually, I got to talk to her, and uh, we both decided that you are the Jim Morrison of the metal oh, music scene. Well, thank you very much. That's right. You are the American poet right there. Thank so. you. Thank you. <laughs> I thought you just meant I was the nude guy that's going to get arrested. <laughs> You're the updated Lizard King, Good. so it's All okay. Right. Um, yeah, I was also going to ask you, how has it been working with the new drummer, Dan, uh, since he is the original drummer of Norma Jean? Yeah. How's that been going? He's the best. He's the best. He's, uh, you know, he, I mean, this record is, it's like everybody was on 100. There was no, nobody's picking up anybody else's slack. I, I feel like everyone gave the best performance they've ever given. And, Daniel just added an element to this band that we didn't even think we needed until he came in and did what he did, and we're like, holy shit, where has this been the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, you guys are extremely, you, you have to be one of the most hardworking yeah. bands on the scene. You guys constantly tour. Um, Jordan has his amazing artwork that he yeah, does yeah. for you guys, yeah. and he's about to wrestle. Yeah. And you just came out with a book uh, called Scale. Yeah. Uh, tell us, um, you know, how, how did that, how, when did this book start for, for you? Uh, the idea come, I should say. I mean, it's, it, was, it started about four years ago. Um, I just started writing to just kind of keep track of things. I, I think I was starting to fear that my memory was going, so I was, I mean, honestly, I was taking notes on my life, and it wasn't really like a tour journal, like a, you know, like some uh, exploitative, uh, you know, journey through the touring world. I was just like, just keeping notes, you know. Um, and then I started realizing these patterns were emerging, and uh, once I recognized that, I figured out that there could be a linear plot line and then I had the idea to alternate the chapters and once that fell into place the whole book really happened for me but it was that was about two years into the process and then it was another year of editing and then it was yeah you know so four years ago probably wow where uh, where could people uh, purchase this book uh, the online uh, has it you go to rare bird is the publisher uh, so go to rare bird books if you go to rare bird books and buy it from them that is the one that will that actually like contributes to me most uh, you know what I mean because they're kind of like the record label of books for me yeah. um, but you can get on Amazon we have it at the merch table you know or if you go to any bookstore any bookstore and they don't have it in and you say you want it they'll order it for you oh wow yeah that's awesome man yeah. well go get his book please go get go. scale please do uh, is there any word uh, I know this is kind of random but uh, the damn things oh, yeah. you guys that that record is incredible is there any gonna you think there's gonna be like a future another album you think uh, I always like to keep Keep all my all my bridges intact, so we definitely haven't burned that one at all. Um, 
there's no specific plan, but Joe Troman and I were just talking the other day about um, he's got some demos for me to listen to. So yeah, that's how it starts. Wow, I don't that, know how long it's going to take, but that's how it starts. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I have one more final question for you. Um, you know, I always say without, um, I'm, I'm a big, big movie buff, and uh, I actually just saw John Carpenter live. Oh, he how did, was that? It was amazing. Yeah, it was I, unbelievable. I I see one of a kind. Like, he played The Fog, uh, The Thing, yeah. everything. Uh, hey, did you know that The Thing soundtrack became a Hateful Eight soundtrack? Hateful Eight soundtrack. I just read that, yeah. and that which is another great movie. Yeah, it is. Um, but you know, with, with movies, without the music, you know, it's bland. There's no yeah. substance to it. Right. Um, but I was wondering, if you had to compare your band to a movie, what movie would it be and why? Oh, man. You could take your time with this one. I'm going to take my time. Um, I, maybe Blair Witch, uh, just because it's, you listen to, I, I feel like the people that are, are into our band are very trusting and uh, they're just kind of going through the woods with us and we're like and getting we lost yeah we know where you are don't worry we have a plan we have a plan uh, we don't really have a plan though we're just kind of doing it so awesome. and then at the end it's a horrible nightmare yeah exactly yeah. that's that's a classic I think that movie's like 20 years old now that's, it's that's getting up there yeah the first like the way they filmed and everything it was yeah. like on like a super lower budget and yeah. everything yeah well, hey, man, uh, Keith, thank you so much for doing this, man, and uh, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Check out Every Time I Die on Warp Tour this summer. See ya.